Open us, eternal God, to your word, read and proclaimed. Help us not to turn from your truth or avoid and distract ourselves from your message. Help us be receptive to the wisdom you offer in this worship moment. Isaiah 40, 1 through 11, 28 through 31. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the God, Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, why shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the youth will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. It may be found on page 156 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles if you would like to read along this morning. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism, into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. 
We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yesterday marked the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. I know most of you have personal stories of that day, remembering where you were not when the first but the second plane crashed into the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. It was a horrendous and surreal event, the beginning of the word terrorism becoming commonplace in our vocabulary. We grieve the lives lost some deeply connected to members of this congregation. We remember the heroic acts of the first responders and the risk so many people took to help those in dire and unimaginable circumstances. We've all heard stories of survivors and witnesses who were overwhelmed with fear, disbelief, and survivor guilt. The man who stayed late at home before getting to work in the World Trade Center, the woman who was home sick that day, the boat owners on the Hudson River who decided to serve as ferries, boat lifting frantic people eager to leave Manhattan from one side of the water to the other. These living, breathing people would sit and watch the news in pain realizing they were still here. They did not die. They lived to tell. A clergy friend of mine who had been there reflected last evening, there is no coherent story to tell, for there are a million stories to tell. In spite of the fragments of reality that cannot be easily summed up, she shared that she's grateful to be here and doing pretty well, all things considered. We're all still here with our memories and recovery stories, with our hopes and exasperations. 20 years after our country began a war with the Taliban and in Afghanistan, we have finally and officially withdrawn our troops. It's controversial and messy, and we lament the lives that were brutally lost just as we ache for those who are still caught in the middle. It's hard to look back on the past 20 years and think, how are we still here? Politics aside, our world is also still facing the COVID-19 pandemic. A year and a half ago, we all went into lockdown, thinking a few weeks or months of hunkering down would be doable. 18 months later, we are still wearing face masks and limiting travel and interaction. Coronavirus continues to threaten us, especially the most vulnerable people in our midst. But none of us expected the pandemic to so radically affect our lives this many months down the road. Sometimes we wonder, how are we still here? When we find ourselves in such a contemplative pit, we are forced to name the pain in our lives and in our world. We have to acknowledge our place in the pit with our frustrations, doubts, and challenges. It may not be rock bottom. Perhaps we're well on our way to recovery. Still, so many people I know these days are running on empty at the end of their ropes. The hope we cling to as a people of faith is sometimes all that sustains us when we feel life is too heavy to bear. The author Anne Lamott reminds us, God promises to meet us where we are 
but not to leave us where he found us. So we turn to scripture, listening to the ancient prophet Isaiah, give hope. He offers comfort to God's people, reminding the city of God and that her penalty has been paid. She's sacrificed enough skyscrapers, relinquished too many lives to count. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Even though the things of this world are temporary, our hope in Jesus Christ is eternal. When we stand on God's word rather than our own, when we await God's presence, we find renewal. We can rebuild. We saw the Freedom Tower emerge from ground zero. We saw an end to war. We have seen improvement in the threat of COVID-19, and we have learned enough to resume a lot of our daily lives. Presbyterian pastor and TV evangelist, Mr. Fred Rogers, used to say that in times of trouble and distress, his mother would remind him to look for the helpers among us, working with those in need to improve their situations. God continues to meet us here and send the aid of helpers. God moves us along from where we feel stuck to where we need to grow. In Romans, Paul writes about walking in the newness of life. For if we've been united with Jesus Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united in a resurrection like his. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Christ Jesus. As members of the church universal, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are alive in ways that make us free from being dragged down by the trouble of this world. We live into the promise that God gives us so that we have hope to share. When the disciples realized they were still here after Jesus had died, been resurrected, and ascended into heaven, they taught others how to love and serve in God's name. God has met us wherever we are, dead to our sin and the sufferings of this world. And God has scooped us up and given us a sacred kind of holy energy so that when we try to live in ways that God instructs, we suddenly have wings to fly. I'm not sure where your here is right now. Maybe you're still caught in a broken marriage. Maybe you're still attached to an addict who cannot stop using. Maybe you're still suffering from grief. Maybe you're still worrying about flooding and climate change and inequality. There are many places we feel stuck, eager to emerge from pits of despair that can feel suffocating. Yet we worship the God of holy, transformative breath, the spirit of life. We are still here on this earth for a purpose, not of our own making or, to quote Romans, so that sin may abound, but so that we might be agents of grace. We are still here together, able to build relationships with one another so that all might know God's love. The Christian class, the Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, stars George Bailey, who has a transcendent experience. He's at a low point where in the 1946 Hollywood film, God meets him here, 
but doesn't leave him where he found him. An angel from heaven gives George a glimpse of what life would be like if he had never existed. He is removed from his own story. He's not there. But he watches loved ones do life without him. He's forced to see the good and the bad and what kind of impact his existence makes in the world. This gives George a new lease on life, a new appreciation for all that he has. Much like a cancer survivor or someone coming out of a bad car accident unscathed, George is so grateful to be alive, he realizes not only is he still here, but he wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And nor should we. The church is still here, too. Perhaps you've been living life apart from our congregation for a little while. We've been successfully holding in-person worship for over a year now, safely gathering to renew our commitment to God and one another. We have met, deliberated, and prayed for our community. We have continued our mission, making sandwiches, harvesting the garden, and helping to provide shelter to families in need. We have made ourselves available online and have remained connected to those who remain at home. Each member has a part to play in this body, and it has been far too long since we have felt whole. We are still here for you and are grateful that you are here as a part of us. We are still here inspired by the Holy Spirit, sustained by God's word and ready to practice love and grace. God has a purpose for our lives and no matter how hard things may seem, we are never in this life alone. The Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, searches us out and embraces us into the fold. This is a gift. When we celebrate our life together, God meets us here and mounts us up to prepare us for what's ahead. So if you are feeling lost and alone, or if you know someone who could use the great reminder of what a gift life can be, trust that God is sending us out on eagle's wings so that we might soar to new heights and scrape the heavens together. Thanks be to God. Amen.